In our previous videos of this lecture series, we've been talking about genetics or the study of inheritance through genes. Now, inherit genetics is a branch of heredity, which is a study of how traits get passed on from generation to generation. We also talked about the difference between a character and a trait and about the fa father of modern genetics, which is an Austrian monk called Gregory Mendel. And that the greatest achievement that Mendel did is debunking the blending theory of genetics, that the idea that we are, we are just a mix of mom and dad. He actually figured out that it's more complicated than that, that there is a particle, a magic factor that combines and that with specific relationships that actually creates who you are, which means your mom gives you a tiny particle and your dad gives you a tiny particle and that the way those particles talk to each other is what makes you who you are. Sometimes the particle from mom talks loudly, more loudly than the particle from dad. I'm sure you had that situation in your life. Your mom says do this, your dad says do that. Who do you listen to? Whoever's the dominant one, right? So that's kind of how it happens. And in some situations, mom is the boss. In some situations, dad is the boss. And that's kind of how it is. And so particle genetics was discovered by this Austrian monk called Gregory Mendel. He's one of the greatest scientists in biology. And he spent seven years studying seven traits in thousands of pea plants until he actually saw a pattern for, for that explain how the traits were passed on from generation to generation to generation. And what he was trying to solve, actually, is, is this mystery that he couldn't understand. He couldn't understand how come when you get a red flower and another red flower, you should be able to make all red flowers if the blending theory is right. But you don't. Sometimes it's true. All the children come out red. But sometimes the children come out red or white. And then when you got a red flower and cross it with a white flower, well, you should get a blend, right? So you should get something in between like a pink maybe. Well, that's not what happened. In fact, mo sometimes you got all red flowers. So what's going on there? And then, so other times when you got the red and combined with the white, you got half red, half white. And so he was like, what's going on? There's like no pattern to this madness. Can I understand how to predict genetics? It's not blending, I can tell. But how, it, how what is exactly happening? And it took him years to figure out the pattern. And we're going to talk about in the next lecture videos, how did he do that? But before we do that, let's talk about some basic key terms that you need to understand. First and foremost, Mendel never actually called anything a gene. The term gene came from, from later when scientists actually rediscovered Mendel's work and gave him credit. Because Mendel would pretty much die in obscurity. Nobody, nobody actually gave him credit while he was alive. But... Je the, he never became famous as, as he while it was alive. But later on, as the field was, as the particle became, received the name genes, we called the study of these genes genetics. And we call Mendelian genetics classic genetics because it's the original type of it. Now, what is a gene? According to Mendel, this factor is the, main, the, the, the smallest particle that can determine who you are. We now know that that's a DNA molecule. But Mendel did not know that at the time. But he envisioned the DNA molecule, the need for the DNA molecule, even before it was discovered. And he actually said that this particle, you got one from mom and one from dad, and then the way that those particles talk to each other determines who you are. And so that, for Mendel, it is the, was the most basic unit of inheritance. But for, for modern genetics, we think of genes as the m smallest piece of DNA that can create a specific look. In other words, the smallest piece of genetic code that actually gets translated or and then trans transcribed and translated into a protein uh, product. Now, when you look at me, what you see is proteins. And proteins are basically made out of DNA. So we have this idea that genes equals proteins. That all the proteins in your body are made based on your genes. And that depending on the specific proteins that you have, you're going to look one way or the other. So in other ways, a flower is red, not just because a particle tells it to be so, but it, it is so because a protein makes it red. And it's if this protein is making it red because DNA is telling the body to make its protein, that protein. And that's kind of how it works. So nowadays, we think of genes as the smallest unit that codes for a protein, therefore generating a specific look, which is called a phenotype. Now, the best way to understand how genetics works is to think of it as an encyclopedia of information. 
So you have inside each one of your cells an encyclopedia of genetic knowledge. And all the cells of your body has a, have this encyclopedia of genetic knowledge in it. And it's actually this very same encyclopedia of genetic knowledge. The only thing that makes one cell different from the other is which parts of the code are being read. So maybe one cell is specialized on, on one thing while the one one is specialized in the another. So depending which parts of the DNA is active, the cell is going to one, look one way or the other. But all of the cells in your body have the same DNA. And this encyclopedia of knowledge is your entire DNA molecule. Now, we know from the lecture in meiosis that DNA in prokaryotes is a circular, unique chromosome. But that in eukaryotes, there's many chromosomes which are separated with a complicated process which requires prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase during both mitosis and meiosis. Now, these chromosomes are basically pieces of your entire DNA code. So think of it as the DNA code got so large that instead of having one book, we have several books, the same way that we need to separate encyclopedias into smaller books. Now, each of these books contains, it's basically a chromosome. Now, each of those books contain thousands of chapters, about thousands of topics, and that's kind of, kind of how it is in an encyclopedia. Now, each page of this book, or each chapter of this book, is like a gene. A gene is a specific piece of the, of the chromosome, or the, or the book, or, or it's a specific chapter of the DNA code that determines a specific function or a specific character in your body. So there's going to be a gene in charge of making the color of the flower. Now, that gene is in a specific location. Just like in a textbook, uh, the chapter about biology, uh, genetics is in a specific location of, of, the, of, the, of the chapter. And so that is what we call the locus or the location of this gene. Now, when you look at books, I have here an Earth Space Science book. It's got a chapter about space. Then this, this another Earth Space Science book, which also has a chapter about space. But what this book says about space and what this book says about space is not exactly the same thing. So both have a gene for space. Both perhaps have, if this is an analogy with what happens in a cell, both have the chapter of space on the same chapter, chapter 21, in the same position. But what one chapter says and what the other chapter says is not exactly the same thing. Now, that is kind of how it works. Now, each version of a chapter is called an allele. And so, for example, you see here, now, the, be the beauty of the way the genetics works is that you get a whole encyclopedia of knowledge twice. You have 46 chromosomes, but you don't have 46 types of chromosomes. You don't have a book about chemistry, biology, uh, uh, you don't have 46 different subjects. You have 23 different subjects. You have 23 books in this encyclopedia series. But hold on, Mr. Lima, I thought you said we had 46. Yes, we do. But two of the books, for every, every two books, is the same type of book. Just like I have two Earth Space Science books here. Just like I could have two biology books, two chemistry books, two physics books, two history books, and so forth. And so these are different versions of exactly the same thing. How come you have that? Well, think about how meiosis and fertilization works. And this is something that Mendel actually figured out. All of this is Mendel's idea. The idea that you get one chromosome. Well, he didn't know about chromosomes or genes, but he knew about some particle that was doing this. So he, you get one chromosome, number one, or type one, which has thousands of genes inside of it, from your dad. And then you get a one chromosome type one from your mom. And then when it comes time for you to decide how to make skin color, you look at the chapter on your mom's book and in your dad's book, and together these books determine your skin color. Now, I, however, what Mendel also figured out, it's not that it's not blending what dad says with what mom says. It's not like dad says, yes, you can go to the party. Mom says, no, you can't go to the party. And then you kind of go to the party. It's not, how it, it's not how it works, you know. In the, way it, the way it works is that one of the books is better than the other for that gene. But not better in the sense of that the gene is better. It's the sense that it talks louder. One is more dominant. One will take over the other one. So ever ask for your mom for money and your mom says no. And then you ask your dad for money and instead says yes. So the next time you ask your dad for someone for money, you go ask dad because you know he's the dominant one if I want money. Oh, but when you want to get 
to get emotional support or something like that, maybe you go from dad again. But maybe when you go want to play, maybe you go to go for mom, for mom. And so throughout your childhood, you figured out who's dominant for what, and you t definitely figured out who you who to ask for certain things. Because sometimes one says you can do this, or the other one says the opposite, and then who do you follow? Well, the dominant one. How many times does that happen? But is it possible that both say the same thing? Yes, it is. Could both pairs, could this book and this book have exactly the same material on chapter 20? Word for word. Yes. But chances are that that might not be the case. And that we're going to talk about all these variations in a second. But um, that's kind of how it works. Now, for each of those chromosomes, you get one copy from dad and one copy from mom. And then the combination of those copies and the way they talk to each other is what makes you who you are. And that is the idea that Mendel came up with to explain genetics. And you can see this in the board here that you're going to get one gene from mom and one gene from dad. So like the parent flower said, be, please be purple. So you have the whole DNA code. And in this chromosome, which is a, a, a book, there was a chapter the, the, or a gene that determines flower color, which is the character. Now, in this specific case, the version of that gene, or the allele, is saying that the trait should be purple. Now, in this case, the allele, or the version of the gene, is saying you need to be white. And so, now, you have two versions. Is this flower going to be purple, or is it going to be white? Well, it depends on whether purple or white speak louder. And that's the idea that we're talking about. Now, notice that in the bottom here, you actually have the different versions of what you could have. You can have two flowers that talk, say the same thing, and you see that both of them here are saying this, big R, big R, or little R, little R. Or you can have a mixture where one flower, one, one gene says one thing, one gene says another. Now, why is it two pairs? Think about it. Because we're diploid organisms. Remember that? We have one copy from mom, one copy from dad. We're diploid. Remember, the cells, the meiosis, are haploid, they're half. So you are not a copy of your dad plus a copy of your mom. You are a, a mixture, not a mixture, sorry, a recombination of half your dad and half your mom. Because your dad makes a half-ploid cell or a half of what he is to give and donate to you and your mom does the same thing to become one whole you. Now there are organisms out there that have more than two copies of each chromosome. There's a video about this that's called non-disjunction uh, and how the non-disjunction causes variation and evolution. And in that video, I talk about polyploidy, which is or things like strawberry, which are actually 8N, or they're octoploid, and they have multiple copies of each chromosome. But that's not the case in humans. We are diploid. We have two versions of each chromosome. Now, that means you're going to get two genes. Now, notice that one gene can dominate over the other. Right, but before we talk about that, there's the concept of phenotype or or, or genotype. Now, the phenotype is what it, you actually look like. That is what you see when you touch, when you see someone. You're seeing the proteins that make up the person, and those proteins is the product that comes out of the DNA. That is your look. For example, blue eyes or brown eyes is what you actually visualize. But there's a code that actually determines that. Just like you saw that there's a code that it makes the flower red or white. Now the code is the specific combination of what mom and dad are telling you to be. So maybe dad says do this, mom says do that. The combination of that is the code. What that code means or what it actually creates is the look that we call the phenotype. Now so phenotype for the physical characteristic. Genotype for the genetic code that you have. Now, I need you to understand that what actually what you actually look like is actually a mixture uh, between the environment and the genes. And we're going to talk about this in another video lecture series. But there's a lot that you can do to change what your code says. Just because you say, your, your code says you need to be white, it doesn't mean you're going to be white. You can get tanned. Remember that. So the environment interacts with genetics to actually make your look. So it's not as simple as genetics equals look. Some things, some traits, are determined by a combination of the environment and the genes. Now, in the next video, we're going to be talking about how this code gets formed and how it actually works. So, we'll talk about that on the next video.